2019, this human traffic jam went viral. Growing crisis on Mount Everest, gridlock on top of the mountain. The death toll this year has been terrible. It's a crowd that's becoming common and fatal at the top of Mount Everest. Now, in 2023, a record number of climbing permits have been issued in a season that could go down as the deadliest in history. So why is getting to the top of the world so dangerous? This is the peak of Mount Everest, 8,848 metres. And this is the death zone. It's the part of the mountain above 8,000 metres. And here you can find yourself in serious trouble. So I've seen my clients getting crazy, you know, run, going out of mind, doing crazy things up on the mountains. And then, yeah, they need to be uh, evacuated as soon as possible or they might lose their life. This is Pemba Sherpa. He's a mountain guide and has climbed Mount Everest seven times, including once just a couple weeks ago. It was quite emotional reaching up to the summit. Yeah, it's the roof of the world. And then you see how the earth is round, you know, the globe. You see the carbs, you know, and then the alpine glow. Oh, yeah. The first light coming out, glowing all around. Yeah, it was amazing, yeah. He says from bottom to top, climbing Mount Everest takes weeks. So normally, the whole expedition is uh, around 45 to 50 days. So, but like, it doesn't mean like we 45 days we are up on the mountain because like it's a it's a long process of your body getting used to the elevation so we spend quite a time at base camp and then slowly move up to camp one go a little bit higher acclimatize and then come back down rest a few days again make a second rotation go up to camp one sleep night there get up to camp two sleep another night go a little bit higher get used to and then get back down to base camp, rest a few days, and that's how it works here. Yeah. Our bodies need time to adjust to higher altitudes. Rushing too quickly up the mountain can be disastrous. Arjun, hello. <laughs> oh, hey, hello. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, now, I wanted to ask, Say I got magically transported to the top of Mount Everest right now. What would happen to my body? What would happen to me? Oh, <laughs> it's a great question to ask. Probably not good thing happening. Not good. Say Dr. Arjun Berlicotti is a very enthusiastic senior lecturer in anatomy and neuroanatomy at the University of South Australia. And then go, you know, move around and then come back and get... He says a lot of the issues we run into at higher altitudes have to do with oxygen intake. Anywhere in the body, including brain and the lungs, they all depend on the oxygen that you that comes from the atmospheric. That's the thing. <laughs> As we climb higher and higher, there's a drop in atmospheric pressure. So while there's no change in the amount of oxygen in the air, it becomes a lot more spread out, meaning we inhale a lot less with every breath. You know, our body is the best, you know? Let, let them to change the environment and fix everything by themselves. Once our body senses the dip in oxygen, it's pretty quick to start making adjustments. For starters, we'll start to breathe more, trying to get more oxygen into our lungs. Our brains will also send signals to our heart to start pumping a bit more and get more oxygenated blood throughout our body. Water loss also increases and we become more dehydrated. Mm -hmm. And you feel dizzy. Yeah. And nauseated. Yeah. And this is what you call mountain sickness. Gotcha. While our bodies do get used to some altitudes, it can never acclimatise to conditions above 8,000 metres, the death zone. 
Here, we're breathing in about one third of the oxygen we'd get at sea level. Doesn't matter how strong is your physiology, everyone, all of us, after that height, they all would feel that type of, you know, some sort of things. In the death zone, our blood vessels constrict and fluid can leak out into our lungs and brain and cause swelling. When it leaks into our lungs, it can lead to something called high altitude pulmonary edema. When it leaks into our brain, it's called high altitude cerebral edema, causing swelling and fluid in our brain tissue and neurons. So that could be manifested in the form of craziness or you know, hallucination and dizziness and fainting or things. The longer we spend at super high altitudes, the more likely we are to contract either of these potentially fatal conditions. And it's one of the reasons Mount Everest can be deadly. But climbing it comes with even more risks than that. Avalanches and icefall have led to some of the highest death tolls on the mountain. This year, three Sherpas died when an ice tower collapsed and buried them. While climate change is literally changing the mountain, making it more unpredictable and shortening both the climbing season and opportunities to reach the summit. So everyone wants to go up on the finest weather, you know. The weather window is very short, you know, and then everyone wants to get up on the summit. So, so that's, that's one reason why it's crowded. Then there are the climbers themselves. Not many real climbers come on an Everest. I mean, I mean, the real climbers, you know, it's, it's more of like high altitude tourist. It would be better if you have more regulation. After a huge spike in deaths in 2019, the Nepalese government brought in new rules requiring climbers to have more training and experience. But it's still letting a lot of people do it. In fact, it issued a record 478 permits this year. The mountain is a massive source of income for the Nepalese government and provides jobs for thousands of people in the Himalaya region. Now, after a deadly climbing season, some people are calling for change. So it's like a mother to us, I mean, mother goddess to us. It's because of Everest, like tourism is flourishing, it's bringing a lot of people here. It's all the way from Kathmandu, the hotels owners, the travel agent, everything, you know. If, if we had no Everest here in our region here, yeah, it would be different. 